Hello everybody and welcome back to Performance on Wheels. This is my 2002 Chevy Corvette Z06 and in the last 40 days it has done a full transformation from being one of the grossest C5s on the road to this carbon fiber wide body C5 Z06 with multiple different changes all in just 40 days. And in today's video we are going to go over everything that I did to bring this Corvette from being what it was to what it is now. As Austin was stating, today we're getting into the transformation of his Z06, but that's not the only transformation in the video. It's also the next generation Corvette owner. It and really what, is. What do I mean by that? We are not rocking New Balances and jean shorts and tucked in short shirts. I would say we're styling and we are styling because of true classic. I love this brand. I've been wearing their t-shirts for years, but not only are we wearing their t-shirts today, we also have their hat products and their shorts products on and they feel amazing. I feel good. I feel ready to get into today's video. We look classy, man. We look good. We really do. And now the reason I really like True is not only the companies that support, that they support, but just the pure simplicity. Just the simplicity of the simple colors. The materials are fantastic and top notch. And they're just really comfortable. Right. I really, really like their stuff. So if you guys are interested in True like we are and you would like to support us here on Performance on Wheels, please check out the link in the description below and type in the code that we have down in the description below for a discount on some True material. Now let's see what has changed on the Corvette. All right, so the like 30 second or less recap, we went to Southern Missouri. We picked up the Z06 for 16,500. One owner, no marks on the title, 60 some thousand miles, but it did have some issues. It, it did. had some stuff that we're going to get into into today's video. Part of that has to do with the radical transformation that took place going from a completely factory Z06 to what we're seeing in today's video. But there's more to it, right? Because we're in a time crunch yep. because you have plans in like two weeks from now. A one week from now, yeah. Okay, and then we have plans less than 30 days from now going all the way across the country for the Hot Rod Power Tour. Yeah, so I'm going to Wisconsin Dells. We are from Minneapolis uh, in, on the 19th for what's called Automotion and then the Hot Rod Power Tour, which is a five day across country experience with like five, six, 7,000 other cars, yeah. drag strips every day. But this Corvette had to be prepared to be putting on close to probably four to 5,000 miles within a span of a month. And when I bought it 40 days ago, it was nowhere near ready right. to do that by any means at all. So I'm gonna go over and assess some of the damages that are on the car so you guys can see in further detail what happened. So when I purchased this vehicle, the owner claimed that he hit a deer, um, but it looks like it was more an incident with a curb in the front and possibly another vehicle on the side. So we're gonna go over that and show that in further detail up close. Then I'm gonna go ahead and show where all the locations are and the drain plugs, the fill plugs on the transmission, the differential and engine oil. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started and I'm gonna show you the fluids and everything and along the process as we go. What we're currently looking at is the passenger side lower radiator support. As you can see, one of the things on these C5s is the lowest point in the front of the car is actually the radiator support. Now, if we look over on the driver side, we can clearly tell that that is not straight at all. Uh, it has been impacted quite greatly. So we are, I already have the part here. We are gonna be replacing this radiator support and I've heard that it can be a, a kind of a pain in the butt of a job uh, because uh, th this radiator support's actually screwed into the frame um, and, and it can bend inside of the frame, which it kind of looks like this one has. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to pick it up on camera because it's too far up there, but my brake cooling ducts all jammed up there. Uh, obviously that's the bumpers sort of jammed up there. Uh, so we're going to see if I can easily fix that um, and replace that. So that is going to be one of the steps along the process here. here. On the passenger side of the Z06, it looks, I mean, normal. It looks totally normal, like a standard Z06. Nice looking car, got your brake cooling duct there. The driver's side isn't so pretty, however. Um, <laughs> as you can see here, it ended up going into the fiberglass on the door. Uh, it cracked the fiberglass along the whole inside of the door very large hole here in this fender and then if you guys look at this picture here on the inside of the door when you open it up there's some cracked fiberglass on this whole uh, rocker panel so i'm gonna have to replace the rocker panel fender door 
and uh, the radiator support, possibly a bumper, it needs a headlight cover. On the mechanical side of things, on the underside of this C5, uh, everything seems to check out except for the fact that the tires are about 10 years old. Uh, so we are going to be doing new tires on it. The brakes are very, very low, so we're going to be doing brakes all around on it. We're going to start off by doing an oil change in the brakes today, uh, as well as the transmission fluid, and we're waiting for the differential fluid to show up. Um, but as you can see, the underside mechanically appears to be very clean and solid. There's nothing going on under here. As we work our way to the back of the C5, apologize for these covers I have sitting on my lift here. Move this one forward a hair. Um, everything looks good. Transmission's dry as can be. The rear differential, we do have a little bit of a seat going on from this passenger or driver side uh, axle seal. So we are going to possibly have to look into doing that. Uh, other than that, everything checks out. Oh, there's our bald rear tires. We're going to have to replace those. Uh, everything checks out mechanically. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Got myself a 15 on here. Let's crack this thing loose. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and line up my tray here. Hope that looks good. Spin back here, spin her out. After letting it drain for a while, we are to a drip and looking at the end of the drain plug, we're all good to go, no metal shavings. So we check out on the engine side. Let's go ahead and get that oil filter off and make sure everything looks good on there. Got my handy dandy little claw here to take off this oil filter real quick. Just give it a spin, make sure you get it a little bit loose. Position it right, and off comes the filter. Here it goes. So unlike, uh, I believe the C7, or the C6 Z06 is the first car that had this, but unlike the C6 Z06 and newer, um, this engine does not have a dry sump, so it only has one drain plug. Uh, so if you guys didn't know, a lot of newer Corvettes and Camaros uh, on their LS and LT engines have something called a dry sump system, uh, which basically just helps keep the oil cool, is uh, my understanding of how it works for track use. Um, and that's actually one of the issues with this engine when you push them hard is oil starvation. So the dry sump on uh, newer Corvettes really helps with that in track use, so you need, usually need to put an external dry sump or oil cooler on these when you use them around a track commonly. Um, uh, but on newer ones, uh, there's two drain plugs, so there is not two drain plugs on this Corvette. For the new oil filter, I'm going to be using a Mobile One M107A. Uh, I use this filter all the time on my CTSV, which had the same LS6 that this Corvette has. And I never had any issues with it, and it works great. So, go ahead and screw this guy on here quick. Put a little bit of oil around the gasket. Make sure she's nice and snug. As we move our way back here to the transmission, our drain plug is just right here on the passenger side on the very back of the transmission. And our fill plug is actually this sensor right here. So we just pull that sensor out and that's where we go ahead and put the fluid back in. I'm a little bit worried about this one, um, <laughs> only because uh, of making a mess. I don't know how far out it's gonna shoot and I have to try to hold up that little bucket. It's kind of awkward on this four post lift. I don't know if this fluid has ever been changed. This car is 21 years old now and it's got 60,000 miles on it. So I don't know if it has ever been changed. I'm gonna try to slowly take this plug out. I don't know where the heck this fluid's going. Hopefully it comes out nice and slow. Hopefully. There we go. Oh, that's dirty. Yeah, that's dirty, that needed to be changed. Uh, no metal shavings on the bottom of this plug, so I think we're looking good there as well. What we're going to be using for fluid is Pennzoil Synchro Mesh. So I was reading a lot of stuff on forums and people say that this stuff just makes the transmission feel fantastic in these and it's very high quality, good fluid. So I got myself uh, four quarts of Pennzoil Synchro Mesh. Uh, based on what I read online, it takes just under four quarts. So let's go ahead and start filling it up. I also just went down to my local Harbor Freight and I picked myself up this transfer pump, which makes it very easy for exchanging fluid in these bottles uh, into the transmission or differential itself. So I'm gonna use this to put the tranny fluid in the transmission, then we'll use it for the differential as well once that fluid shows up for it. Just start filling her up. This pump makes it incredibly easy does take just under seven quarts. However, uh, a lot of people say that on the dipstick, it never shows that, so just put seven quarts in and 
that's where it shows as full on the dipstick. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put seven quarts in. Should be all good to go here. This is our fill plug for the rear differential. This here is our drain plug for the rear differential. Yet again, another super easy job. What we're gonna be using today, this is what we were waiting for to show up, is 75W90 Royal Purple uh, differential fluids. Hopefully, I don't get my hands covered in this old nasty diff fluid, because this stuff stinks. There we go, a little more. It's gotta be right on the edge there. There we go. All right, so for parts, I got Power Stop Extremes. Uh, I actually really like these. I ran these on my Cadillac. They have carbon fiber ceramic brake pads, and they are absolutely unbelievable. Now, the reason I say that is because they create absolutely zero brake dust, and the braking performance is very good. I do really highly recommend Power Stop brakes. I'm a big, big fan. Now, let's get these things on. Check out these stock uh, old, old brakes that we have here on the C5. <laughs> Got kind of a rusty uh, surface face here on the rotor on the uh, driver's side. I'll hop over here quick so we can look at the passenger side. We also have a rusty face there. Uh, pads aren't terrible in back, but they're completely shot up front. So I figured why not just do all four because the rotors are old and look terrible. Here we have those bald back tires. They are just totally bald, and uh, these are gonna be getting replaced here soon, but that's a uh, video to come in the future. But yeah, here, here these guys are. These are replica C5 Z06 wheels. Let's do a quick comparison now that you can see the unfinished driver side, and I just finished up the passenger side. So check out, we got the new power stop performance pads and rotors on there. Uh, they do look good, much better than the other ones. Uh, also, uh, actually, I'm gonna ask that in a future video. Disregard, disregard. Uh, this is what it looks like without the brake cooling duct. So I went ahead and removed it. Uh, as you can see, you can see straight through there now. Uh, it was a duct that came here and kind of blew right onto the caliper, but we no longer have that duct uh, because of a future mod that is in store. I'm replacing both front wheel bearings on my Corvette because they have a little bit of play in them. Uh, it does look excessive right now because I already have some of my bolts loose. Um, but ultimately all I did is I went ahead and took the top nut off of the ball joint, slipped the arm up uh, just by pushing up on the, uh, the, heck, the hub. Sorry, I couldn't think of the name of it there. And then there's just three uh, Torx bits on the back there, T55, one, two, three. And then you just loosen those and you can pull out the wheel bearing and then we pop the new one back in. It is a super easy job to do on the C5. After doing those couple of simple steps, you just pull the wheel bearing out uh, and, and there it is, there's my old wheel bearing. So the reason that we were replacing these is when I grabbed my wheel and I was shaking my wheel, I could clearly tell that there was some play and after uh, feeling the back of the wheel and trying to figure out what suspension component it was, it was the wheel bearing. It had some forward and backward movement and it was also making some noise when I did it with my hand once I took the wheel off. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop this new one right on back in. This is a very, very easy job to do, so. Uh, let's just go ahead and take this one out of the bag and put it right back in. All right, I got both front wheel bearings done. I didn't record the other side just because it was obviously the exact same process. Uh, but we just take out that ball joint bolt, couple of those torque bolts on the back, pull it out, put the new one back in. Of course, we got to deal with that sensor and plugging and unplugging, but it is simple as that. Let's go ahead and assemble these front brakes. I was on replica wheels. It was not the factory Z06 wheels, which is the fancy Aloka or whatever the heck material they're made out of. Please correct me in the comments below if I misunderstood that or am I not right on what they're made out of. Um, but they were not the factory wheels. There were some aftermarket chrome wheels. I don't know where the factory ones were because I was never told about them changing it. The only thing they told me this car had was an aftermarket exhaust. Right. So it has a billy boat cat back exhaust or axle back exhaust. Um, so that led me to, well, I knew going into it that this car needs four tires. They are bald right. and I don't want to spend my hard earned money 
on some crappy looking wheels to put tires on them. So that then led me, because, because they weren't the factory sizes either. Right. They were a little bit skinnier than the factory wheels. So I'm like, I don't want to spend money on tires on wheels that I hate. So that then put me in the market for wheels. So I started searching long and hard for a set of wheels, also knowing that I need a fender because I have a hole in my fender. Right. So I, and I was recommending that you just go OEM, find one in the junkyard, yeah. and, and just fix it the way you want later. But you came across these carbon fiber ones on Facebook Marketplace. I did. And before you know it, you have this whole route picked out, driving into a blizzard uh, in Minnesota to Iowa, like five, six hours away, to get these carbon fiber fenders off of Facebook Marketplace. But yep. not only that, you find these brand new in the box C7 Z06 wheels yep. that someone had uh, got as a warranty repair for their cracked ones, never yep. been on a car. Nope. So you got these carbon fiber fenders, these wheels, and obviously brand new tires, which are wide as can be and look absolutely killer, I must say. Uh, wasn't part of the plan, but it all came together really quick. And like yeah. the fenders were like the next big thing after you had uh, mechanically the car in a spot where you wanted it. They were, yeah. So the, the fender made this car look really nasty. If you if you guys look at these pictures, if you check out these couple of clips, the fender ruined this car entirely. Yeah. Like it, it it looked bad. Once I actually cleaned it, you know, it, it wasn't that bad. The, it, of course, it needed a fender in the door. The minor little issues up front were, they're fixable. They're not bad. Um, but yeah, I, I knew I needed a fender. So I started searching eBay. I started finding junk guards. I was looking at carpart.com and every fender that I was finding either had scratches through the paint. Um, it was a ridiculous amount of money to ship. Yeah. Um, or I, it, it just, I couldn't find one that was a, um, uh, FRC yeah. cause the FRC and the convertible have different fenders in the coupe. So I was then looking at, holy crap, I'm going to be $600 into a fender, getting one that's clean here on the car and i just I, I was like wow that's obviously a lot of money i wasn't planning on that when i was looking at parts when i was buying this thing because you know I, I i spent three days looking for parts for sure and i was like okay well that doesn't seem that much that doesn't seem like that much and then of course when you get it it, it that comes into reality right. the cost of things so you end up finding some carbon fiber fenders yes. on marketplace for like 700 bucks i paid 700 dollars for those fenders i believe when that set came out that is a two thousand dollar kit and wow and there's such an easy bolt-on install that was right? that Piece was of cake if i spent two thousand dollars on that i would i would be livid with the company that made them that was miserable installing yeah. those fenders they were not bolt on by any means there was so so much cutting backyard involved. Yard modification, yeah, lots. got the grinder out. Alrighty, so after I just got those couple of bolts out and those couple of bolts out, like I showed you guys, I just took my hand right up front here, pulled hard uh, because it kind of lodges in uh, right up here. So you just pull hard, it pulls out the front of the fender, and then you pull it forward a little bit to free it from these screws here. Let's move that back in there. And you can pull the fender right out. It's as easy as that. There's the old fender. Uh, it's a very easy job. You don't even have to take the wheel liner out. You can just access or put your arm through the taillight, take out this and this, and you can just pull the fender out. It's a very easy job. I watched some other videos of people pulling the fender liner out, and I was looking at it. It was like, why? Well, I don't even see why you need to do that, and obviously you don't. I just did it. Um, but that is what the inside of a C5 looks like uh, with the fender liner out. So uh, if we check out my old one here, we can look at uh, the damage. Ugh. So here, that is uh, obviously all missing and that's going to be replaced with the new one. Uh, I did just lift it up and put the new one over it just to see what it looked like because it was kind of uh, challenging. It's very challenging to do holding the camera here. Um, but yeah, it looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this area in here because the reason that this whole area actually gets so dirty is if you look up here when it rains, uh, this right here is a water drain hole. So it comes down here goes down this channel and it all goes right into there. So it gets super dirty. And the same with back here. If you actually look up here, this whole thing's a water drain channel. See, it's all slanted this way and it all goes right back in here. So whenever it rains, all of that nasty, dirty water goes right into the back of the Corvette, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all that stuff up and then we'll start fitting the new carbon fiber fender. I got my gas cap all wrapped. So I just used some 3M wrap uh, and wrapped it in carbon. That way it won't look so silly going from black to carbon to black. Um, so it, it should flow somewhat nicely. Let's go ahead and try to 
see exactly how this guy will fit here. This will sit just kind of like so. It's a latch in right under there. This will zip up to that, and that will screw right onto the fender there. So, yeah, gas tank goes up here. This kind of lines up down here. And it'll be tightened down a bit, but that's ultimately how it should look once we're done. That is quite a bit wider than stock. There is no doubt about that. It's pretty wide. A whole lot of fitment issues later, it is in, and it's still not great. Uh, I'm kind of upset with this. Uh, yeah, that that's the absolute best I'm going to get it. But you know, from a very short distance, you can't tell it's like that at all. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, had tons of issues with the gas cap, tons of issues with this whole front panel right here, tons of issues with the back panel. It was very challenging. I still have to do the other side, but it is in. Uh, I'm sorry that I didn't record a lot of it. There was so much trimming involved here and a lot of trimming involved right up here uh, Just to make it fit it was constantly uh, Picking it up putting it down picking it up putting it down picking it up putting it down that I, I just did not have time to record It was taking so much time. Um, it, this has taken me nine hours today um, So it, I've just been doing it so much that uh, it just didn't I wasn't able to record so hopefully when we get to this other side here that it goes a little bit smoother also what do you guys think of that carbon gas cap it actually blends in pretty well for just being a wrap versus the uh, real carbon and then it took me forever but we did it uh, it does look super corny but the, it was absolutely the only way I could get it to work because I had to take a really, really flat screw and put it in. I put some Sharpie over it so it kind of blends in as a chrome screw. It's the absolute only way I could figure out how to get the gas cap to shut, um, but it does. So it shuts and opens just fine now. Uh, but there it is. And then I'm not putting the side markers in because I ordered the LED ones. Um, the fitment on these is just terrible too. So if I put these in here, I put it in the wrong way. So look, it like doesn't even fit in the hole really, it looks really bad. So I ordered the LED ones that are like smoked black and or smoked gray, so it'll blend in a lot better and not stick out like that. So those should be here soon. Uh, but yeah, there it is. I've had a lot of people tell me like in pictures, like, are you gonna paint those? Like, it just looks stupid. Like, why do you have two different colored panels? And then they see it in, their per in person, they're like, oh, yeah, that looks pretty cool because it like, when you're walking up to the car, it looks black yep. because it just kind of blends in and then you get the sun under it and it, it, you see the glistening carbon fiber. Yeah. It looks pretty dang but cool. But this isn't where the story ends, right? It is so not. You, you put carbon fiber fenders on, then all of a sudden your side markers and your tail lights just look outdated. Oh, and they look super yeah. old. Yeah. And then not only that, but I had to take the side markers out to do the fenders. Right. So, so it only made sense that you update all your lights on the car. Absolutely. So that was the next step. I all of a sudden hopped on Amazon, started looking at stuff, started reading stuff. I was like, wow, you can make this car look really, really cool. Yeah. Really, really modern for not a lot of money and yeah. not a lot of work. I was, I was quite impressed with the addition of such an easy mod, uh, the tail lights, especially how modern it made this 21 year old car look. They look sweet. It looks really good. It looks really good dri driving down the road. Uh, the side markers obviously add to that but there's more to it because you have wide body fenders now, so you had to push the wheels out a little bit. Still not quite where you want it, so you're gonna get a little bit bigger wheel space. I do have a different there. spacer sitting in the trunk. So what does suck about the C7 wheels that I did end up finding, so, so here's the cool story behind these wheels. Like he mentioned, they were never opened in the box, OEM wheels. This is like a, over a $5,000 set of wheels to buy these brand new, which is insane. They're limited edition, C7R edition wheels. Um, and they're really wide. <laughs> I mean, these are, these are very wide wheels. The fitment in front is perfect. Up front, I did put a smaller tire on than recommended for the C7. Um, so I believe, here, let me double check for you guys really quick. It has a 275 on the front, a 285 is recommended, but I did put the recommended tire on the back because I just didn't want to risk it because that is a lot of tire. It's a lot of wheel. Yeah. Um, Looks so really good being behind it driving yeah, down the road. So it's 19 by 10s up front, 20 by 12 in the back. So it has a 335 on the back, but the fitment or the offset on the C7 wheels is not perfect for the C5 by any means. So yes, I do need a larger spacer. I was driving it for a very short period of time without a spacer um, and we noticed it was rubbing. Yeah, it was it, rubbing it was, instantly. It's rubbing on the inner fender well mm -hmm. is where just to, 
if you're looking at C7 wheels and you're like, yeah, this is going to be cool. Well, yeah. yeah, we're hitting on the inner fender well. Yeah, so I put a 0.75 inch spacer on and, well, it's not rubbing anymore, but the fitment is not great in my opinion. It I'm looks not good. A, just kind of depends on the angle. Yeah, it, it looks good depending on the angle, but I did get a much larger spacer now because I did a bunch of research on reading about how hub-centric spacers work and people's reviews and, you know, as long as you put them on right, as long as you don't drop the clutch, it's going to be totally right. fine. So I ordered these from VMS Racing. These are the lowering bolts for the C5. I specifically just double checked. I did order the C5 ones, but the instructions that came with them say C6, C7. So let's go ahead and unbox these and hope, well, that I got C5 uh, lowering bolts and poly polyurethane bushings. So we got the poly polyurethane uh, bushings, got some washers and some nuts. Here's we have the bolts here, and these are the bolts to the front, I believe. So let me, uh, I gotta, just got to get the old ones out to confirm that they are the right ones, and this isn't the C6, C7 kit. I don't know how to tell the difference, to be totally honest with you. So let's go ahead and start taking this apart. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, I think. Maybe it won't be, um, because of the way I have the car jacked up. So I have the car jacked up by the front cradle, just using a piece of wood here. And uh, I'm just going to start trying to, uh, or I'm just going to start by taking out the two bolts for the shock here, this one and this one, as well as these four bolts here. Uh, just kind of pull out this system. And then instead of using a jack like a lot of people use, I am going to be using a pry bar uh, as the way that I'm going to lift up the spring to get the old bolt out. So the way that this works is you basically unscrew this bolt right here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. You just unscrew it, pushing down onto the control arm which um, then you take a pry bar in between the control arm and the leaf spring pull it apart uh, and then you pull the old bolt out and put the old bolt back in and depending on the amount of height from here to here adjust the height of the vehicle so I just took a 15 I took out the four bolts that were holding in that upper control arm I took a 13 and took out those two bolts that were holding in that lower uh, or the, the shock emit and then uh, it just kind of dropped this whole assembly here so it lowered the control arm and now there's much more distance in between this bolt and the control arm, which is exactly what we we're trying to do. Now we're going to start unscrewing this bolt and then I'll have somebody come help me and I'll take a pry bar and pry in between the control arm and the leaf spring. Once we get close, pull out the old one, put in the new one. Kind of challenging to do with one hand. My buddy's not here yet, but um, what I'm doing is I have a pry bar on the control arm uh, and prying up on the bottom of the uh, leaf spring. And then I was able to pry it up enough. I just un turned it by hand. Uh, I'm just going to keep going and our goal is to just pull this screw out of the bottom as well as the bushing. So we want to pull the screw and the bushing out of the bottom is our is our goal. Because you now have a sweet yellow stripe around the wheel, it only made sense that you replaced your pancaked, no foam remaining in your factory Z06 seats with these amazing Amazon finds. Yeah, these are these are something actually. So, yeah. so I had no intentions on replacing the seats on this car, uh, not yet. So I wanted to do it in the future. I really like those Corbo, like specific C5, C6 seats. I can't remember the model. Please put it down below if you guys remember that off the top of your head. Um, but I really like the way those seats look. I was a huge fan of them. You know, it's a thousand dollars for a set of seats. It's a, it's a lot of money, especially with how much money I wasn't planning to dump into this car in the time right. period that I did. Yeah. But in my short drives in it, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to go 5,000 miles sitting with half of my butt an inch off the ground and the other side, like three inches up, yeah. not to mention zero support, not to mention going forward whenever you hit the brakes. Like the factory seats are terrible. They're really, really bad. And yours may have had some extra weight in them or something because like the foam was literally yeah, there's, just, there's there was just zero, zero support. You're sitting on metal in the front. And here's what's really crazy. So the, the price of those factory seats is insane. People ask like, Eight hundred to a thousand dollars for that set of seats, yeah. which I would never pay. It's I think. OEM. It's I, cool, yeah, it's right? OEM. So Love I ended it. up selling those seats for six hundred and fifty dollars for my set of seats. They were clean. The leather was clean. Mm -hmm. um, the power seat worked, but they they just they needed foam replacements. I was looking into replacing the foam. It was like one hundred and fifty bucks per cushion. Yep. So per cushion, I would have been the same price as I paid for these seats. So now you have the good looks, you got the wheels, you got the carbon fiber, you got the fun lights in the back, you got the seats, you just got your windows tinted, which looks great. Yeah. So you were still missing one thing that took quite a bit of effort and that's taking the front end apart and changing out that radiator support, yep. which you got that looking good, but not only that, you straightened out the bumper because it was clear that the 
uh, bumper was just wedged and creased. Yeah, so so this I didn't have a lot of video of. I did a lot of pictures of this because this was really time consuming for me. Um, this took me a lot of time and I did this entirely by myself. Um, so the, the radiator support is the lowest point in any Corvette. Uh, excluding the plastic lip that everybody scrapes on everything. That, that's specifically just to basically push air up into the radiator because the radiator sits at an angle up front. But the radiator support as well what the radiator sits in in the front. Because um, it sits at like that awkward angle so there's this big support with these two uh, like metal rods that stick out of the front of the car. So mine was bent inside of my bumper sideways, right. which then pushed my bumper upwards, which then broke the brake cooling duct in half and had that all jammed up in there sideways. It had it, it like stuck under the headlight, like wedged into the motor. So I'm very glad that it didn't screw up anything there actually. Um, it had like part of the factory fog light or running light housing, like, like it was pushed at a weird angle um, and every single plastic panel, every single screw, the vacuum motor, um, all of that stuff was all screwed up from this thing. And it was a mess down there. Yeah. And I didn't realize how big it, big of a mess it was till I pulled the front bumper off, which conveniently it took me like 25 minutes. Right. <laughs> super, super easy to work on. You got it back together. You got the radiator support in there. You got everything supported uh, without too much effort at the end of the day. No, it wasn't um, that bad because honestly, the radiator support, um, going into this, buying this car, it was like, holy crap, it's gonna be like 400 bucks. It really sucked. I found it on eBay for 80 bucks. Right, and it <laughs> so, fit good. And, yeah, it fits yeah, perfect. Sweet. Apparently it had tons and tons of reviews, so I did that. And then while I had the bumper out, I was like, man, these lights are pretty easy to replace up here. I started, you know, of course, searching around, seeing what stuff was like. Like, I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon. I got these smoked housings. I bought some LED lights for another 30 or 40 bucks. And man, it makes the front end of this thing look pretty mean, all, all blacked out. Um, I've never been a fan of blacked out cars, but I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, it's really fun with the yellow accents. Obviously, you put some of those inlays to make it pop both on your mm -hmm. front license plate bracket as well as that Corvette across the back. And then we also have uh, some paint on the way. Going to get the calipers to match as well. And then, um, yeah, I got to get the new brake cooling duct in because I ordered one and it's not here yet. Um, I, uh, we bought some underglow to, t for, for, heck yeah, yeah, just for underglow. Fun. So one of the fun things on hot rod power tour guys, if you're still watching and you want to join this, uh, C5 Z06 journey, we actually have two C5 Z06s that are heading across the country together, both completely different builds. So it'll be fun to check those out mm -hmm. and see how they do on this road trip. I'm pretty excited. So that one's totally set up for drag. Um, as I own this car, I, this has been one of my dream cars for a while and I just think some of the builds on them are just crazy and I love the power plant. So this is a car I want to keep for a very, very long time and I would love to make this thing just a full out track car. Um, just because I think it's awesome. I think it's, I think they're cool. Um, you don't see Z06s too often. Right. You see C5s everywhere, but you know, they're kind of unique, not super unique, but yeah. it's still a really special fun car for the price point it's at. And I'm very, very happy with it. Um, but yeah, videos that we have coming up is I'm probably going to make a video on the road trip I'm taking to Wisconsin Dells. It's first long trip. Um, and then of course it is going to, we're probably going to be doing daily updates on the power tour. It'll so be a good time. It'll be a very good time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the video here on Performance on Wheels. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of the Corvette. It's made a big transformation in the last, last 40 days or so. Lots of cool stuff to come. Don't forget to get that t-shirt either. See you Absolutely. next time. See you guys.